let's take a look at narrowing applicant pools in the selection process. Interviewing and reference checks are major responsibilities for the hiring managers and involve discretion. Although this discretion is important, unstructured interviews and haphazard reference checks frequently result in low validity, wasted resources, frustrated candidates, and illegal practices. Generally speaking, only structured interviews that we'll describe in this presentation have high validity. It's especially important to conduct high-quality interviews and reference checks given the trend towards decreasing use of tests. The first issue is deciding who will conduct the interview. The four options are 1. The supervisor, 2. The human resource department or a third party, 3. A panel or committee, and 4. A series of interviews, who may include immediate supervisors, higher level supervisors, a committee, a colleague forum, and clients. Although the practice is not common in the public sector outside academics, sometimes the hiring unit acts as the hiring committee due to the increasingly collaborative approach towards work today. For entry-level professional positions, selection panels are frequently used to enhance the diversity of opinions about candidates. Candidates vying for senior or professional positions often have separate interviews with an advisory selection panel and with the hiring supervisor who makes the final decision. A second critical question is that of whom to interview. Public sector employment involves two different approaches. One approach is to interview all candidates who meet minimum qualifications, but because this is time-consuming for interviewers and may unnecessarily inflate the hopes of candidates, it's less commonly used of the two. When the applicant pool is small and multiple positions are open, or when the time of interviewers is available, however, such an option might make sense. In other cases, the candidate pool may lack exceptional candidates, and the use of more extensive interviewing may be the logical way to try to discover hidden talent. By far the most frequently used approach, however, is to interview only the most qualified people. At one time, the rule of three, propagated by the Civil Service Commission, was commonly followed. It restricted hiring authorities to interviewing the top three candidates who were certified, this practice was used to keep much lower-ranked eligibles from being selected because of fears of political interference or managerial cronyism. This injunction is still in place in many federal agencies, although it's much criticized. In many civil service systems, the allowable number to be certified is often expanded to four, five, or six, and sometimes to the top tier. Today, the tendency is to give hiring authorities discretion to interview any number it wishes and to determine minimum qualifications needed for meeting that threshold, making the eligible and certified lists identical. Nonetheless, there are practical reasons to restrict interviewing. In most cases, the top three or four candidates are obvious, and interviewing more is unlikely to be productive. Where discretion exists, hiring authorities can consider alternative methods. Online or telephone interviews, or both, can rapidly provide a good deal of information and answer many preliminary questions. Likewise, video conferencing can precede on-site interviews and widow down the application field. Reference checks can be done before the interview process to gather information to help select the most desirable candidates to invite. 